We have new evidence showing that the BBC and the Labour Party are working together and left-wingers on Twitter have a meltdown over Boris's new baby. Well, hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of Maya's Life. Uh, this is not a great week for the Labour Party or the BBC. Uh, so we've discovered, we have new evidence showing that uh, the BBC Panorama, which uh, they do documentaries exposing dark secrets. They've been plotting with the Labour Party and Labour activists uh, to do this uh, documentary last night about um, hospitals and nurses and this whole PPE uh, scheme. And uh, yeah, it's not really looking good because we've discovered that all these uh, the people that they used on the show, the, the nurses uh, and the medical professionals, were actually, in fact, Labour activists. Now, before we start, um, last night I discovered that uh, apparently there is now a parody account of me on Twitter uh, going around. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of creative, um, so well done. Uh, but the name, I'm not really happy about the name. So apparently this new account's called Mayor Tutsi. Now, I'm fine with Mayor, but Tutsi? <laughs> really? I swear if anyone starts calling me that, I'll, I'll, I'll lose my, you know, <laughs> don't, don't do it. Uh, he says uh, classic posh Tory. When did I get posh? I'm from a council state in Lewisham. Uh, then it says I S post on YouTube. Uh, love my leader, Boris. Please watch my video. Firstly, videos, not video, but okay. But this is what we're dealing with right now anyway. Uh, going back to the BBC Panorama. So let's start with this because uh, last night they brought uh, John Ashton. Uh, who's been a, a Labour member for the past 50 years. Uh, I, I don't think he's a member anymore, but he was. And uh, so they always bring him up and as a, a, the kind of the expert, independent expert. Yeah, he used to go on Question Time and other, and other programs. Obviously, this was exposed by Guido Fawkes. But uh, he's not the only problem because uh, uh, last night on uh, the Panorama program, uh, the people, we, are now, we now have the identity of the the guests that they have on the show. We have Dr. Sonia uh, Adasara, who is a former Labour candidate, featured in Corbyn videos, shared stage with Corbyn, uh, spoke at a Corbyn rally, and a Wikipedia did it dedicated uh, to her activism. We have Nurse Libby Nolan, a Unison Union steward, <laughs> attended the Corbyn, uh, Corbyn rallies. Uh, the, the whole kind of, uh, she's behind the Sack Hancock uh, movement. Uh, called for action against the government. Dr. Ariel Eno, uh, she's a member of uh, Docs Not Cops, <laughs> free, migrate, uh, free Migrant NHS Access, uh, described Tories as privatizing, warmongering, immig immigrant hating prats, <laughs> and she is anti Israel, obviously. And Dr. Asif Munaf, who is pro Corbyn, attacked the new Tory Red Wall voters in the north, and she's obviously anti Tory. Dr. Abby Mantgani, uh, forced to stand down from the rural CCG. Uh, he supported momentum, he's supportive of Labour, and he's uh, called one of the ministers a pompous fool. Now you might be wondering how they managed to get all these people, uh, you know, what if it was an accident? What if they uh, just asked some nurses and doctors to apply to get on the show and they did it independently? No, not really. So this is uh, Nigel Flanagan. He's a union organizer. He's an actual communist. And uh, so he was the one who collaborated, uh, they kind of liaised uh, with uh, Labour and uh, uh, the BBC. Uh, he actually tweeted proudly saying, I was one of those who spoke to Panorama and put them in touch with health workers. They told me that they would not let them down and would tell the truth. They did. You should all watch it. They would not let them down. Hmm. Interesting language, right? I mean, for far too long, we've been talking about the BBC's uh, uh, kind of spin and the whole fake news stuff. Uh, it's never been this obvious. Uh, this is the first time we now actually have evidence of uh, labor activists uh, and the uh, BBC staff actually working together. It's kind of embarrassing, guys, because this is against the BBC guidelines. Yeah, according to Guido Fawkes, uh, the BBC's own editorial guidelines, which state under contributors' affiliations that appropriate information about their affili affiliations, funding and particular viewpoints should be made available to the audience when relevant to the context. Well, well, well. So they're not really following their own guidelines. Uh, I wonder if uh, anyone at the top of the BBC will do anything about this, but highly doubt that. Uh, by the way, like, just look how amazing Hyde Park is looking today and uh, how quiet because I actually came here early. We only have about a couple of hours, probably less than a couple of hours until it starts raining. So I thought I'd actually come out of the house earlier to do my 
government sanctioned walk <laughs> so um uh, at some point i also need to go to the shop to get some food as well now the interesting thing about this whole thing is that even the health secretary matt hancock yesterday uh, completely rejected and destroyed the bbc panorama claims because they're absolutely nonsense um i i, I saw two of the things that you referred to uh, i'm not sure that they were a, a, a fair and objective um, journalistic uh, assessment of the situation but what we do have is constant focus on the realities of getting PPE to the front line uh, and we we take full responsibility to getting it to every single person who needs it. The thing is what these people are doing uh, they are uh, completely destroying the, the reputation and the credibility of the majority of NHS uh, staff, uh, nurses, doctors, and uh, generally medical professionals, uh, because uh, not everybody's like this, not everybody's a left-wing activist, uh, uh, but this is how they're making the whole NHS uh, look like. I mean, this is a tweet done by Tom Harwood, uh, which perfectly uh, paints the, the image, uh, the, the difference between uh, what the BBC wants you to think of uh, uh, the NHS and what the true NHS looks like. Uh, so this, on the one side, we've got actual labour activists uh, and uh, on the other side, we have uh, the, the real doctors and nurses uh, actually supporting uh, Boris Johnson's, maybe they're kind of get well soon, Boris signs. Okay, I just realised wearing these was a terrible idea uh, because uh, it was raining last night in London and everything's now wet and now... <laughs> It's not really looking good. I don't know why I'm walking on the grass, but I'm, I'm just actually gonna go on this to stay away from the wetness. But this whole uh, BBC and Labour stuff is not the only thing that we're dealing with today. Uh, earlier today, we had uh, Boris's new baby being born and uh, the majority of people in the country have been uh, happy. They congratulated the Prime Minister and Carrie, uh, but left-wingers on Twitter went into a meltdown. And they <laughs> so they've come up with all these conspiracy theories saying that this is all planned ahead. I'm like, yeah, usually usually you plan it, but you know. <laughs> but the, what they were saying is that this is a, this is a plot to uh, do this at this time to distract the public. I'm like, it's a very biological issue. It's nature. I don't think you can do that. So for example, we have one of the Labour MPs, Ruth Cadbury. Also, I love the name Cadbury. Uh, saying, it appears that Boris Johnson has just found yet another excuse to miss the Prime Minister's questions. Wow. Bob Eager, <laughs> Eager uh, says, ah, they've induced Carrie to give him an excuse. Mike Jingle, what, what is with these names? <laughs> he said, baby arrived just in time to avoid Prime Minister's questions. Was birth induced? And we have John Hilton saying, not a summer baby after all. Surely not induced? Am I really that cynical now? Classic Dom. Okay, firstly, good news, it's raining now, so I'm gonna have to <laughs> run back. Uh, but generally speaking, what is wrong with these people? It's, uh, it's absolutely mental how um, they, can, they come up with all these uh, conspiracy theories. Yeah, it was Dominic Cummings. Yeah, he did it. You know, it, it was plotting this for like months and months because <laughs> he knew we were going to go through this health crisis now. And uh, he told Boris nine months ago, you know, get a baby together. <laughs> what is wrong with you? So that, that rain was absolutely unnecessary. The uh, BBC weather app said that it's not going to rain for another two hours. Two hours, right? You know what? The BBC lied. Maya's hair got wet and dyed. <laughs> As if I didn't have enough problems with my uh, massive hair during this lockdown. Now I have to deal with the BBC app lying to me. Anyway, going back to the media's obsession with Boris Johnson. Um, it's not only his newborn baby. Uh, they're, they're also the mirror have uh, gone after his daughter, Lara. Um, there's, a, there's an article in the Mirror uh, talking about how Boris Johnson's daughter, Lara, orders Prada headbands at home while doctors beg for PPE. What? Uh, firstly, she's an adult. She can, you know, she makes money. She could buy whatever she wants. Uh, it's not really Lara's job to sort out the PPE problem. Um, also, it's not even the job of the politicians, it's the bureaucrats in government uh, that uh, are supposed to be doing this. 
Yeah, go after the Public Health England and other bureaucrats in, in Whitehall. Uh, Lara, what, if, if she wants to buy whatever Prada headbands, or <laughs> just leave her alone. It's, it's absolutely disgusting. Now, the other thing is uh, that uh, I'm sure you guys remember a few weeks ago when this whole thing kicked off. Uh, they were saying, the media were saying, we have sources confirming that Dominic Cummings is against the lockdown and uh, he's forcing the government not to do it. Uh, and uh, so Piers Morgan and others decided to go after Cummings at the time. Now we have a set of new, uh, well, another kind of a, a set of sources uh, confirming, apparently, according to Bloomberg, that uh, Dominic Cummings pushed scientists to back the lockdown at the time. <laughs> so we don't know who to believe right now because, uh, you know, according to certain outlets, uh, Cummings was against it. And now according to some other uh, new sources, Cummings was in favor of the lockdown. This is why it's very important not to randomly trust whatever the media tells you, because, uh, you know, they always uh, have an agenda, have an angle, uh, and this happens. Absolutely chaotic. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna go, uh, if you've already seen today's uh, video at 5.45 p.m., uh, you've seen that I interviewed Isabel Oakshot on the channel. Um, I haven't actually done it yet. I'm gonna go prepare for that interview, set up the studio, the camera and everything, and uh, so do that. And I'm going to also then have some lunch and then hopefully we'll uh, catch up with you guys in the comment section and tomorrow's video. If you have any uh, ideas, if you like this new format that I do every day at 8, 8 p.m., um, then obviously put it in the comment section. If you don't like it, also put it in the comment section. If you have any new ideas, let me know. And uh, as most of you know, 5.45 5 p.m., the news show continues uh, with that format. 8 p.m. every day, uh, we have uh, Maya's life vlogs, uh, where you know it's just more of an informal format. So if you like it, then make sure to subscribe to the channel and click on that bell next to it so you get notified. Uh, and uh, apart from that, I'm gonna go get ready for that interview. I'll see you guys tomorrow with a new video.